Since beginning my current path of looking to the Jesus Christ of the Book of Mormon and not putting my trust in the men who lead the church I was born into, the Lord has shown me so many things I'm grateful for. I feel like He has helped me understand the Scriptures much deeper than I ever had before, and He has given me a hope and a peace that I never had before, and that's wonderful. But I still have a few remaining questions, and one of the big ones is about the subject of authority. Coming to understand the word iniquity and seeing how seeking for power and authority caused the destruction of the Nephites, I'm wary now of anyone who says they have authority over others. But I also believe that the Book of Mormon teaches about the essential nature of proper authority from Christ, and so I wrestle with understanding the difference. Specifically, I want to answer the following questions. First, is there a right and wrong version of authority? Second, is authority even necessary? Third, if it is necessary, where does proper authority come from? And fourth, if I can't find a person with Christ's authority today, what should I do? As I attempt to explore these questions in this video, as always, I look to the Book of Mormon for answers. The word authority occurs 47 times in the Book of Mormon. Similarly, the word ordain is found in 24 places. Many of these instances warn against authority, and many of them teach the true nature of authority. There's a lot to consider here. So the first question, is there a right and a wrong version of authority? Well, for the wrong kind of authority, I want to consider two scriptures that represent many more in the Book of Mormon. The first one is in Alma 51. It says, Now those who were in favor of kings were those of high birth, and they sought to be kings, and they were supported by those who sought power and authority over the people. The second one is in 3 Nephi 6.15. Now the cause of this iniquity of this people was this. Satan had great power under the stirring up of the people to do all manner of iniquity, and to the puffing them up with pride, tempting them to seek for power and authority, and riches, and the vain things of the world. And thus Satan did lead away the hearts of the people to do all manner of iniquity. These two scriptures support what I believe to be one of the main themes of the Book of Mormon. It shows people seeking power and authority over others, and it calls this iniquity. Their desire is to be above others not only in the government, but also in the church, and, I believe, in their own families. Nephi, the son of Helaman, lamented the iniquity of the government of his day. It says, And seeing the people in a state of such awful wickedness, and those Gadianton robbers filling the judgment seats, having usurped the power and authority of the land, having lain aside the commandments of God, and not in the least a right before him, doing no justice unto the children of men, condemning the righteous because of their righteousness, letting the guilty and the wicked go unpunished because of their money, and moreover to be held in the office at the head of government to rule and do according to their wills, that they might get gain and glory of the world, and moreover that they might the more easily commit adultery and steal and kill and do according to their own wills. Even after Christ had come and blessed the Nephites so much, Within a couple hundred years, some churches fell into this pattern of iniquity too. In 4 Nephi it says, There was another church which denied the Christ, and they did persecute the true church of Christ because of their humility and their belief in Christ. And they did despise them because of the many miracles which were wrought among them. Therefore they did exercise power and authority over the disciples of Jesus, who did tarry with them, and they did cast them into prison. I see the beginnings of this today. I was raised in a church that professes to believe in God, but which exercises power and authority over those who are humbly seeking to follow Christ and learn from His scriptures. They persecute them. They call them into courts of, of love. They judge them, not with the judgment from God, but with the rules and judgment of men. In this way, many of these humble followers of Christ are condemned by this church and its leaders, and are cast out from among the people, and told they will not be allowed in Christ's kingdom. This can be a traumatic experience for someone who has spent much of their, or all of their life, within the church. And my heart aches for everyone who is persecuted for seeking the truth. But my heart also sings when I see so many good and honest people side with Captain Moroni when he said, Behold, I do not fear your power nor your authority, but it is my God whom I fear. And so witnessing our modern church usurp power and authority over humble followers of Christ, over the dead prophets of the Book of Mormon, even over Christ's own words, I'm left to wonder if authority and power are inherently evil, or is authority sometimes good and necessary? Well, it seems that according to Christ's own words to the Lehites, 
In some cases, authority is essential. For instance, to baptize. In 3 Nephi, it says, And the Lord said unto him, I give unto you power that ye shall baptize this people when I am again ascended into heaven. And again the Lord called others and said unto them likewise, and he gave unto them power to baptize. And he said unto them, On this wise shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you. Verily I say unto you that whoso repenteth of his sins through your words and desireth to be baptized in my name, on this wise shall ye baptize them. Behold, ye shall go down and stand in the water, and in my name shall ye baptize them. And now behold, these are the words which ye shall say, calling them by name, saying, Having authority given me of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Also it appears that authority is needed to serve the bread and the wine in Christ's memory. He said, There shall be one ordained among you, and to him will I give power, that he shall break bread and bless it, and give it unto the people of my church, unto all those who shall believe and be baptized in my name. And this shall ye always observe to do, even as I have done, even as I have broken bread and blessed it and given it unto you. In Alma's time, authority from God was also necessary to baptize into the church. It says, And they were called the church of God, or the church of Christ, from that time forward. And it came to pass that whosoever was baptized by the power and authority of God was added to his church. So it seems to me that authority is required in order to baptize, to serve the sacrament, and even to form a church. This looks pretty clear. But if authority is necessary, where does it come from? I was always taught that it came through a hierarchy of men, governed and controlled by many layers of leaders and keys. But what does the Book of Mormon say about where true authority comes from? Well, here are some of the many examples that teach where it comes from. Nephi said, And the Holy Ghost giveth authority, that I should speak these things and deny them not. And how about Abinadi? Now it came to pass that after Abinadi had spoken these words, that the people of King Noah durst not lay their hands on him, for the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and his face shone with exceeding luster, even as Moses did while on the Mount of Sinai, while speaking with the Lord. And he spake with the power and authority from God. And Alma, Alma went and stood forth in the water and cried, saying, O Lord, pour out thy spirit upon thy servant, that he may do this work with holiness of heart. And when he had said these words, the spirit of the Lord was upon him. And he said, Helam, I baptize thee, having authority from the Almighty God. And Nephi, the son of Helaman, the people did esteem Nephi as a great prophet, a man of God, having great power and authority given unto him from God. And finally, Jesus Christ himself it came to pass that when Jesus had made an end of these sayings, he touched with his hand the disciples whom he had chosen, one by one, even until he had touched them all. And the disciples bear record that he gave them power to give the Holy Ghost. So each of these scriptures teach where true authority comes from. It comes from God. And they hit me powerfully. Contrary from what I was taught all my life, that authority comes through the hierarchies of the Aaronic and Melchizedek priesthoods, the Book of Mormon teaches and shows that true authority comes from Jesus Christ himself. This amazing truth has been in front of my eyes my entire life, but I'm only just now seeing it. Men who seek for authority over other men are working iniquity. Their authority does not come from Christ. True authority comes directly from the Lord, individually, not based on age, priesthoods, ranks, callings, or seniority. It's not a badge or a title to be displayed and lorded over others. It's instead an individual calling, a personal authorization, a permission directly from God. Knowing this, I no longer believe that the LDS church leaders have any authority. I don't know a single one of them who has ever claimed to receive authority from God. Not one has seen him, spoken with him, or been ordained by him. They merely ordain and give power to each other in an infinite loop. And with their man-made power, they seek to rule over all those who wish to come to Christ. And to me, this is a direct fulfillment of the prophecies of the Book of Mormon. Coming to this realization brings me to my last question. If the LDS Church doesn't have God's authority, and if I can't find a person with true authority today, what should I do? Jesus teaches in the Book of Mormon that we must be baptized in His name. And He commanded His Church to always take bread and wine in His memory. But how can I do those things if I don't know anyone who has His authority? What should I do? Well, to start... I know from the Book of Mormon that I'm not alone in not knowing where to find true authority. I'm not the first person to be in this predicament. The people of Limhi were also in this situation. 
In Mosiah it says, And it came to pass that King Limhi and many of his people were desirous to be baptized, but there was none in the land that had authority from God. And Ammon declined doing this thing, considering himself an unworthy servant. Therefore they did not at that time form themselves into a church, waiting upon the Spirit of the Lord. Now they were desirous to become even as Alma and his brethren, who had fled into the wilderness. They were desirous to be baptized as a witness and a testimony that they were willing to serve God with all their hearts. Nevertheless, they did prolong the time. If they were able to wait upon the Spirit of the Lord, I believe I can try to be patient and wait too. And the Limhites weren't the only ones. It was similar for the poor of the Zoramites, who were cast out of their church by the leaders of their day. Amulek says, Behold, thy brother hath said, What shall we do? For we are cast out of our synagogues, that we cannot worship our God. Behold, I say unto you, Do you suppose that ye cannot worship God, save it be in your synagogues only? I say unto you, It is well that ye are cast out of your synagogues, that ye may be humble, and that ye may learn wisdom. And Alma said unto them, Behold, ye have said ye cannot worship your God because ye are cast out of your synagogues. But behold, I say unto you, if ye suppose ye cannot worship God, ye do greatly err, and ye ought to search the Scriptures. If ye suppose that they have taught you this, ye do not understand them. But instead, contend no more against the Holy Ghost. Receive it, and take upon you the name of Christ, that ye humble yourselves even to the dust, and worship God in whatsoever place ye may be in in spirit and in truth, and that ye live in thanksgiving daily for the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you. I'm glad to have these examples of these two groups of people. They give me strength. From them I know that as long as I have a desire to follow Christ and keep his commandments, he sees me and he'll bless me in his own time. Until then, I will wait. I wait and find hope in the prophecies of the Book of Mormon. In Second Nephi, the people of the Lord shall not be ashamed. For the people of the Lord are they who wait for him, and they still wait for the coming of the Messiah. And the isles shall wait upon me, and that my arm shall they trust. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Thanks to the Book of Mormon, this question of authority, while an important one, doesn't need to depend on me. Until the Lord sends someone with his true authority to us, I feel peace knowing that he remembers me and my loved ones. He knows our hearts and will bless us according to the opportunities He gives us in our lifetimes. I don't believe He will punish me for not being baptized when no one with authority is here to baptize me. I don't think He will hold it against me for not taking the sacrament if He doesn't ordain someone to give it to me. And I don't feel I will be rejected from His kingdom for not joining a church if His true church isn't established at this time among us. And so I trust that He will bless me for avoiding those who wield the authority of men and for waiting instead for his true authority. And so I wait.